This week at Phoenix brought with it one of the smallest entry lists we've seen all season. Actually, the smallest entry list we've seen all season. Only 55 cars were entered this week as a bunch of teams decided to stay in the Midwest to prepare for the Cleveland Grand Prix, which is only two weeks away. A bunch of teams testing out there. This and a large crash in the qualifier meant that a few underfunded teams that we've never seen on the grid before made the show. Up front, Barry Juveno has increased his lead to 20 points over Andy Lambert, and it's going to be interesting to see how those two battle as this race goes on. Your pulser for this race is none other than the championship leader himself, Barry Juveno, trying to build up his points lead, coming into Cleveland. He starts on the pole and leads Claire Ossier on the outside. Claire Ossier started on the outside pole. He pulls out to about a car length lead. Andy Lambert tries to follow him. Nick Nikos Kostopoulos tries to make it three wide, but is unsuccessful. Good start for uh, Kostopoulos there in the 72 car. I mentioned earlier that a couple underfunded teams had made their first races this season. This is Randy Weber driving for local team Cowboy Racing. They're based out of Phoenix and actually sponsored by the city of Phoenix. He's running in about 41st right now, battling with Chester Benson, who's making his first start in what seems like forever. Up a bit further up the field, this is John Jefferson. Now, you remember him probably from the 76 car. Well, he was fired from that ride after unperforming, and now Zach Tech, the 23 car, has picked him up for the remainder of the season and potentially for next season. Let's see what'll happen there. Lap six, Barry Juveno continues to lead over Andy Lambert. However, Lambert gets a good run on the inside. Good traction there, however, he loses it coming out of the turn. Barry Juveno continues to lead. Andy Lambert's been battling him like this every single lap, but has yet to gain momentum on the front stretch. Chester Benson is running in last place, making his first start since Talladega. He has been underperforming in this car, however, he will be returning to the series next season in this very same car. Further up the field, battling for 10th place, we've got three wide between Isaac Kowalczyk, Cody Deke, and Steve Johnson in the 900 car. This battle has been going on like this for the past five laps, and it's been by far the most entertaining battle on the track. They've been beaten and banging off of each other and racing really hard for this position very early on. Back in the field, battling for 36th position are two cars that are making their debut, the 166 of Dave Hetzel, that team will be running next year as the 17 car, and Scott Wallen, who managed to put the second old-timers group car into the field for the first time, the 02 car. That car is covered in sponsors that they've accrued throughout the season, and it's about time they've got a good run, because that team hasn't qualified for a race since Mansfield with Matt Brinson. Nikos Kostopoulos in the 72 car. After a great qualifying effort, he qualified fifth place in that car. He's fallen back to seventh, and he's been swallowed up by the three-wide car battle, battling for about sixth place now with Christopher Loxanen, Cody Deke, Isaac Kowalczyk, Lenny Jacobs, and a few other cars battling back there really hard for a top ten position. Flint Stoneman has replaced John Jefferson in the 76 car, effective for this race and the next race. He is... Rumored to be trying out for the 87 ride next year, the 76 is going to be taken by A.J. Murphy after a stellar run at Decatur last week. Andy Lambert still trying to get by uh, Barry Juveno at this point. This is lap 16, and he is still unsuccessful. He's been battling like that every single lap. Rene Recarmier, not sure if he's going to be returning to the series next year. They've announced no plans, the Team Wiper team, but he's running in about 23rd right now, and he's about... 33rd in owner points, so he is not locked in for next season if he does return. Another team that hasn't announced its plans yet is the Wisconsin Racing Team with Malcolm Therese. This team is currently running at about 34th place at the moment, and they were originally in the top 35 but fell out around the time of Talladega. They've been struggling ever since to get uh, the car on the grid. This is Tommy Urban, who has not struggled to get his car onto the grid recently. He's made the past three events. He's running in 40th place right now behind Randy Weber. However, it's an improvement, the fact that he's made three races in a row now. Blake Campausen slows on lap 34 from fourth place. He's reporting a tire going down on that car. Lane Jacobs makes a move to get around, gets into Edward Carroll, and it looks like somebody went into the wall there it might have been the 31 of Christopher Oxenen yes it was the 31 of Loxenen he goes hard into the wall he's got a lot of right side damage on that car and he's very slow down the backstretch tough break for that 31 team slowing up for 
his teammate who lost a tire on that car. One driver who gained from Blake Kamphausen's cut tire was Sam Smith, driver of the number five from Aftershock Racing. He has had the worst luck all season. This is probably one of the best runs he's had this season. And he actually tangled with Blake Kamphausen at Decatur last week, and they took each other hard into the outside turn three wall. Blake Kamphausen did multiple barrel rolls, but he was okay to race this week. Andy Lambert's been gaining on Barry Juvano, and as you can see here, he is clearly ahead of him, but Barry Juvano makes the outside work, and he will lead lap 37. Andy Lambert's been racing him very hard every single lap, giving him no room to work. Edward Carroll and Lenny Jacobs are running 10th and 11th, in the two Paloma Autosport cars. Both of these drivers will be returning next season. Uh, Edward Carroll is going to the Lucas Motorsports team, which currently runs the 2, 6, and 36, and Lenny Jacobs is going to the third Paloma Autosport team. Blake Kamphausen is three laps down by lap 43, and he is struggling but on very new tires, so he is quite fast. Up front by lap 48, Claire Asir has gained enough momentum to work on passing Andy Lambert. Andy Lambert tries to hold her off on the outside now, but he's used up his tires on the inside. Claire Ossier makes a diving pass, and she manages to work by Andy Lambert, almost getting by Barry Juveno. However, Andy Lambert tries to make the outside work, but Claire Ossier gets him at the line for second place. Good battle going on at the front. Her teammate, Louis Ballard, who won last week at Decatur, is running in eighth place, battling with Isaac Kowalczyk right now. He's been having a very strong uh, season this year, even though he only started racing since Talladega. He's made every single race since then. Brendan Kelly in the two car is also having a great run. He's been close to the top 10 in this Lucas Motorsports car, despite the fact that his other two teammates have been vastly unperforming in their equipment, the 6 and 36, Craig Taylor and Nate Lorenz. This week, they're actually running in the back. They are both running in 34th and 35th, and they're very slow at this point. Uh, once, I would be wondering what kind of equipment they have in that two car because clearly they don't have the same equipment in all three cars. These cars are much slower than their teammate. This is the highest running Paloma Autosport car at the moment, Cody Deek. He's going to the 31 to take over for Christopher Loxanen next season at Johnson Racing. Loxanen is going back to rally cars at the end of the season. This, this is the battle for 40th place between Kevin Shuttler and... Chester Benson. They've been battling side by side like this for the position for the past 10 or so laps. It's been pretty amusing to watch them. Josh Marshall's running at about 22nd position, but if you look behind him, you'll see Blake Kamphausen has worked his way into the main pack from way behind. He's trying to get his laps back on newer tires. This is Flint Stoneman. Stoneman has moved up into the top 20. He's currently running in 19th position. Despite an abysmal start to this race, he's been slowly working his way up through the field. Lap 72, Lenny Jacobs currently holds down the 12th position. This is his last ride in the Paloma Autosport number 12, as Brian Gallagher has been cleared to drive at Cleveland. However, Jacobs will be in a Gallagher Motorsports number 8 car. Uh, essentially, it's the same car that he's driving right now. However, it's a Chevy body, but it will have a Paloma Autosport motor in it. Christopher Loxanen pulls in the next lap into pits. Uh, we're getting really close to green flag pit stops. Lap 73, the cars are expected to go about 80 laps on a normal fuel run. And seven laps later, Barry Juveno brings in the majority of the field into the pits on lap 80. Barry Juveno, the leader, hands the lead over to Andy Lambert, who decides to stay out and lead a couple laps in order to gain some points on Barry Juveno, his nearest points rival. In the pits, we had a collision between Nate Lorenz and Scott Wallen. However, both cars were fine and would continue on. Next lap, Andy Lambert comes into the pits. He got his points led for the lap, and he continues to lead after green flag pit stops. He's got a big lead over the field. However, there would be a caution for debris right after green flag pit stop cycled out. After the debris was picked up, the restart flew on lap 89. Andy Lambert leads over Ryan Jeffries, who managed to get by Barry Juveno in the pits. Preston Bell and Cody Deke round out your top five. Only two cars are a lap down at this point. Kevin Shuttler, who had an abysmal pit stop, and Blake Kamphausen, who had tire problems earlier on in that run. Unfortunately, the field will only be able to go one lap before a caution flew at the front. Ryan Jeffries going four wide, trying to get by Preston Bell, and he gets turned into the wall. Kevin Shuttler also involved. And there's Rene Rickermere flying by on the outside. Let's get a look on the helicopter here. 
you see uh, Ryan Jeffries just gets trapped on the outside, tries to pull low, but Kevin Shuttler is there and he hooks him. Shuttler gets up on two wheels, but continues on. All cars involved would continue on, albeit damaged. Restart flew on lap 95. Andy Lambert continues to hold the lead. Uh, Ryan Jeffries is very slow. Preston Bell runs second, and what is Blake Camphausen doing? He pushes Andy Lambert up the track. Preston Bell pounces, and he sweeps around Andy Lambert to take the lead going down the backstretch. Andy Lambert falls back to second. Preston Bell will indeed, it appears, he will lead this lap. Yes, Preston Bell leads lap 95. However, Andy Lambert looks very strong on the outside. Preston Bell, his season has been very much an up and down year. It's like a roller coaster, in fact. Driving for one of the best teams in the paddock and the worst teams in the paddock when he drove for Mesa Speedway Racing. Andy Lambert led that time by. Lewis Jones currently driving the 0-1 car. He's in 12th position, holding that position down. This is one of his better runs all season. He's battling with Chris Benson for that position. He's going to the 58 car next year for the same team. Flint Stoneman has moved up into the top 15. He's currently running 15th by lap 98. This car has been slowly working its way up through the field, and I have a feeling that team owner Tom Delgado will be very impressed. Andy Lambert continues to lead. However, he's stuck behind his good friend Blake Camphausen, who actually took out his teammate last week. He is struggling to get by the, on the lapped car of Blake Camphausen. One car that is punching way above its weight this week is Scott Wollen, who's currently running 29th in front of a bunch of cars who he shouldn't be in front of, including the Johnson Racing car of uh, Christopher Loxon, in it appears, and A.J. Murphy in that 87 car. He's battling with, I believe that's, yes, Craig Taylor for 29th position, an exceptional run for that uh, zero 2 car. Another car that's been punching way above its weight this week is the number 166 BMW of David Hetzel. He's running in about 25th position right now, and that car is about a 35th position car. Somehow he's been making it work, and he's been pulling off passes in that car. Uh, up front, Barry Juveno is making a move. He managed to get by Preston Bell, his teammate. Uh, Bell might have moved over to let him by. And Barry Juveno makes it makes a pass for the lead, trying to make a pass. However, Andy Lambert is in the position that Barry Juveno was in earlier in the race on the outside. That move did not work. Uh, Ryan Jeffries is very, very slow, as I mentioned before on the restart. He's about five seconds a lap slower than the leaders. He's falling way off the pace after that damage. I'm surprised he didn't just pull it off and park it. However, he is in the points battle, so I will give him props for that. Barry Juvino makes it three wide for the lead with Blake Camphausen and Andy Lambert. Blake, uh, Blake Camphausen is a lapped car. He helped Barry Juvino lead that lap. I wonder if Blake Camphausen has some sort of vendetta against the Aftershock Racing team because last week he managed to put uh, Sam Smith into the wall and do multiple barrel rolls at Decatur. One of the local boys, Chris Benson, he's from around the Las Vegas area. He's running in about 11th place at this point, looking for a top 10 in front of a home crowd. He's got Stratosphere, a Las Vegas casino, on the sides of that car. Up front, Barry Juveno has obtained the lead. However, Andy Lambert battles back on the outside, and we have a very close uh, run to the line. I think Barry Juveno led that lap. However, a caution would fly on lap 109, just a few laps from the finish. This would be the biggest incident of the day as AJ Murphy gets tired of Kevin Shuttler being in the way, back marker, and he turns him into the wall, and this is a huge incident. AJ Murphy goes over, a few cars involved. We've got Scott Wollen, uh, Kevin Shuttler, uh, Craig Taylor, as AJ Murphy does multiple barrel rolls down the backstretch and gets hit by John Jefferson there. Tough break for him. But that is a wild ride for A.J. Murphy in that 87. He'd get out of that car okay. He'd be fine. We're going to go on board John Jefferson as he sees what happens. It appears that uh, Tommy Urban also got involved along with uh, Chester Benson. A bunch of the back markers were racing quite well for position. However, it, I guess it just wasn't meant to be. Rene Recarmier, we've got a good on board here as you see A.J. Murphy go over multiple times. And that is one of the wildest incidents I've ever seen here at Phoenix. The restart flew on lap 114, only 11 laps away from the finish, and Andy Lambert gets a huge jump on the rest of the field. Barry Juveno must have been sleeping or something on that start because Andy Lambert just pulled out to a huge two-car length lead over Barry Juveno. Ryan Jeffries continues to be very slow as cars are going by him left and right. 
he's been passed on the right, on the outside, he's that slow. Within three laps, 118, lap 118, uh, Barry Juveno has indeed caught Andy Lambert, and it looks like we're going to a photo finish this week as Barry Juveno manages to pull alongside Andy Lambert coming to the line. However, there would be one final caution on lap 119. The 18 of Josh Marshall has been held up by the 91 of Ryan Jeffries for way too long. He decides to try and solve the problem. However, when he tries to spin him out, he gets spun by Tommy Urban, and there's Scott Wellen with nowhere to go. He slams right into the back of the 18 car. You really got to feel bad for that 0-2 car. He had no idea where to go. His spotter must have told him to go to the outside. He gets into the outside wall and just slams into the 18. Just nowhere to go. Chester Benson makes an excellent avoidance, drives straight through the incident. No harm done to that 30 car. This caution would set up a three lap dash to the finish in the desert. Three laps to go. Andy Lambert leads. Barry Giovano in second. Preston Bell, his teammate, in third. Steve Johnson moved up to fourth. Lenny Jacobs in the 12 car rounds out your top five. Barry Giovano looks low. Looks low on Andy Lambert with help from his teammate. And he manages to pull ahead. But will it be enough at the line? I don't think so because that outline is very that outside line is very strong. Andy Lambert will lead the lap. However, Preston Bell looks low and makes it three wide, and we've got smoke on the backstretch. There's been an incident on the backstretch, but no caution. Preston Bell backs out, preferring to support his teammate. Back in the pack, uh, it looks like Nicholas Corradovo spun Ryan Jeffries, and Josh Marshall got into him for good measure. However, that 91 car will continue on somehow. I'm surprised that he is not dropped out of the race yet. Coming to the white flag, Barry Giovano tries to gain an advantage on the bomb. However, his tires do not gain the traction that they need, and Andy Lambert will lead coming to the white flag. Preston Bell trying to help Barry Giovano the best he can. However, he pulls high, perhaps trying to support Andy Lambert. However, Barry Giovano on the back stretch tries to gain momentum. He is not successful. Oh, he, I guess he is successful. He will pull to the bottom, trying to make it work, trying to make it stick on the bottom. However, Andy Lambert coming out of turn four on the final lap will pull ahead, and Andy Lambert will be your winner at the Phoenix Motor Speedway by a bit of less than a car length. You see here, Jerry Juveno gets a bit loose out of that turn and Andy Lambert just takes advantage. Andy Lambert is your winner here at Phoenix. Preston Bell managed to move up into third place by the end of the race, holding off Steve Johnson for fourth. An excellent run for Lenny Jacobs in the fifth position, followed by his teammate Cody Deek in the 32. Claire Ossier manages to finish seventh place. Sa best finish of the year for Sam Smith in the eighth position. Greg Maddox, the highest finishing rookie in that 41 car, and Samuel Brown in the 71 has a quiet run and rounds out the top 10.